Hello everyone, welcome to Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services. It's a video on daily news and editorial analysis, which I'll be covering from the Hindu and Indian Express. So the most important news and editorial of the day that is relevant for both prelims and main stages of civil services examination will be discussed in this session. Let's get started with the news topic list. Today is 20th of December, the first important news that is carbon market and how they operate. This is from the text and context page of the Hindu. Second, COP15 summit adopt historic biodiversity deal. We'll see the relevance of this deal and how it is going to impact the overall sustainability of the environment. Third, the minimum tax on big businesses. This is again from the text and context page of the Hindu. Fourth, the governing India in 2047. And the last is an editorial criminalizing consensual relationship. Right. Apart from the news and editorial discussion, at the end of this video, there will be MCQ based questions. These questions will be based on current affairs that will help you for upcoming prelims examination. So without any further delay, let's get started. And before I begin this session, those of you who are new to our channel, do not forget to subscribe Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services on YouTube. If you like this video, if you find this video informative and helpful and relevant for examination purposes, do press a like button. Starting with the first news, that is carbon market and how do they operate? Something relevant for general studies paper 2 under the subsection, that is government policies and intervention for the development of various sectors and issues arising from a design and implementation. This particular topic of carbon market is again relevant in general studies paper 3, right? Where conservation, environmental pollutions and degradations and EIA is concerned. So the Energy Conservation Amendment Bill 2022, which was recently passed in Parliament in December 2022. Now, the bill empowered the central government to establish a carbon market in India and specify a carbon credit trading scheme. Right. So this is what the actual bill calls for and the important provision is specifying a carbon credit trading scheme. Now, the bill finally approved despite the opposition demand to send this bill to the Parliamentary Scrutiny Committee and even to get more enhanced idea how betterment can be done when it's come to carbon credit because this will be a new concept that will be incorporated via this bill in India. Now, what is carbon market? Carbon market allow the buying and selling of the carbon emissions with an objective to reduce the global emission. So there's a seller and there's a buyer which sells the credit and as per things, function which the aim rational and the main aim is to reduce the global emissions. Article 6 of 2015 Paris Climate Agreement or you can say Paris Agreement provide the use of international carbon market by the countries to fulfill the national determined contributions and to keep the global warming at 2 degrees Celsius. So India ki INDC ki baat kare, India has its own intended national determined contribution of sare countries ke liye NDC defined ki gai hai and they are working to chase the target to keep the global level within 2 degrees Celsius. Now the carbon market exists under the Kyoto Protocol within being replaced by the Paris Agreement in 2020. So Kyoto is again something relevant because it started how the thing has to work in terms of reducing the global emissions and the global warming. But the advanced version of it was evident only during the Paris Climate Agreement. Now, if you see hypothetically, how does it work? Suppose this emitter A, and this emitter B, right? All these have real GSS emissions, that is greenhouse gases emissions. So if emitter A want to purchase, the emitter B will sell it. Suppose this is a hypothetical example and diagram. Now it's it's selling its part of the carbon unit, that is the excess, and the reduced GSC emissions can be sold out. And this is how the carbon market work and the purchasers is now allowed to have the excess GHC emission. So the part that was there for the emitter B has been sold out to emitter A. Now, what is carbon credit? In this context, the word carbon credit or the concept of carbon credit is also relevant. A carbon credit is a kind of a tradable permit as per the UN standard equal to one ton of the carbon dioxide removed, reduced or sequestered from the atmosphere. A United Nations Atmosphere Program released this year noted that the interest 
in carbon market is growing steadily and even 83% of the national determined contribution submitted by the countries with their intent to make use of international market mechanism to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions. Now there are types of carbon market that operates globally. So there are basically two types of carbon market that is being operated. The first is called the voluntary market and the second is called compliance market. So brief about the voluntary market. A voluntary market are those market in which the emitters, corporations, private individuals and other function and they buy carbon credit, right? So here purchase ki jati hai carbon credit ki to offset the emissions of one ton of CO2 or equivalent greenhouse gases, right? And for instances, agar aviation sector ki baat kare, the airline may purchase carbon credit to offset the carbon footprint of the flight as they operate. Now, what is compliance market? The second type of the carbon market. In these market, they are set up by the policies at national, regional and international level and are officially regulated. So this is how the two broad market in terms of basically specify the carbon market function one as a voluntary market another as a compliance market. Now what are the challenges in this sector and the bill that has been passed? So UNDP that is United Nations Development Program has point of serious concern pertaining to carbon market. The first among them include doubling count of the greenhouse gas reductions and quality and authenticity of the carbon project that generate the credit to the poor market transparencies. Now they are also concerned about the greenwashing, right? What is this greenwashing where the companies may buy credit or simply offsetting the carbon footprint instead of reducing the overall emissions. So these are again a fraudulent activities that is being done repeatedly by the multinational companies or the company that is concerned with the emissions. Now the concern about the new bill is specifically talking about Indian context and the provisions of the bill once it is passed from the parliament. The bill empower the central government to specify the carbon credit ko for the trading scheme. So this is what the bill was for. Now under the bill, the central government or an authorized agency will be able to issue the carbon credit certificate. These are some of the important provision. Then I'll make you understand how the challenges has arisen and how the opposition is opposing the main provision of this bill. Now these carbon credit certificates will be tradable in nature, right? So this can be a possible statement in the prelims examination. So this is very much relevant for the prelims examination as well. Now the other person will be able to buy the credit certificates as a voluntary basis. So this will be warranty in nature. Now opposition member pointed out that, that the bill does not provide clarity on the mechanism. Like these are some of the points that has been highlighted by the opposition party that the bill does not specify any clarity and a mechanism how to be used for the trading of carbon certificate will be there and what about the regulation of such trading. So because there is no mechanism, there is no institutional setup that is taking care of. Now the members also raise the questions about the right to ministry to banks came into the nature pointing out while the carbon market in the other countries will be framed by the environment ministries in India and will be tabled by the power ministry. So actually the scheme was framed by the different ministries and it was tabled by the different ministries. The framer was the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and it was actually tabled by the power ministry. So this is another level of confusion and concern. Another important concern is that the bill does not specify whether the certificate is already existing with this scheme and would be interchangeable and tradable within the carbon credit certificates. Two types of tradable certificates are already issued in India that is renewable energy certificates and energy saving certificates. So this is how the two tradable things are actually functioning in India and operating in India once in terms of renewable energy certificates and other is energy saving certificates. Now moving to the other news that is CO15 summit adopts historic biodiversity deals something relevant for general studies paper 3 that is conservation, environmental pollutions, degradation and EIA. So after four years of friction stock nearly 200 countries include India has recently approved the Paris style deal to protect the reverse dangerous loss of the biodiversity following an intense final session of negotiation that took place recently in UN CO15 summit here in Canada. Now coming Montreal agreement, this is better known as 
कॉल फॉर सेविंग द लैंड ओशियंस एंड स्पीसीज फॉर पॉल्यूशन डिग्रेडेशन क्लाइमेट चेंज एंड बींग कंपेयर एज अ लैंडमार्क टू पेरिस एग्रीमेंट तो पेरिस एग्रीमेंट के जो सेलियन फीचर्स थे उसी फीचर्स को बेसिकली दे हैव मेड अ एडवांस्ड वर्जन ऑफ दिस एंड दिस समिट द कन्विंग मॉनिटरल एग्रीमेंट इज समथिंग दैट इज गोइंग टू एडवांस द कोर एसेंस ऑफ द पेरिस एग्रीमेंट Now, what is the aim of this day? The deal aims to reduce the near zero of the loss area of high biodiversity importance, including the ecosystem of high ecological integrity, and cut food waste in half, significantly reducing the overconsumption and the waste generations. Now, this also intend to cut half of the both excess nutrient and overall risk posed by the pesticides and highly hazardous chemical. Right? The agreement will progressively phase out. the reform by 2030 subsidies that harm the biodiversity and at least 500 billion per year will scale up positive incentive for biodiversity consensus and sustainable use the deal require the large and transnational companies and the final institutions to monitor excess and transparency disclosures of the risk dependencies and impact of the biodiversity through their operational supply and value chain portfolios Now, Living Planet Report 2022 of World Wildlife Fund. According to the Living Planet Report of the World Wildlife Fund, it says that the mammals, bird, amphibians, reptile, and fish have seen a devastating of 69 percent of the drop on average since 1970. The 23 targets in accord will also include the cutting environmentally destructive farming subsidies, reducing the risk from the pesticides, and tackling the invasive species. The deal is being compared to many of the landmark plan that limits the global warming emissions to 1.5 degrees Celsius under the Paris Climate Agreement. So the core essence of this agreement, which is still evident, was also incorporated as a part of the strategy. Now, finance package for the conservation effort. One of the most contentious issue is the negotiation. was the finance package to support the conservation efforts globally particularly for the developing countries or is deal ke through progressive increase ki gayi hai financial resources ki by 2030 mobilizing at least 200 billion per year so this was a target that was actually sanctions as a final package to the conservation effort these represent roughly doubling of the base from 2020 and major achievement as commitment of 20 billion dollars as an international finance flow by 2055 2025 and even 30 billion dollar by 2030 so these are the commitment that has been there as a part of financial package for the conservation efforts pesticides reductions in agriculture recently india ne kuch global targets for pesticide reductions ki baat ki in agriculture sector and it's unnecessarily and must to left out countries to decide it is also the agriculture sector in india like any other developing countries that the life livelihood and culture for the hundreds of million support and it cannot be targeted for its eliminations now the un development program welcome the agreement reached at the us convention on biodiversity and to agree a new plan to preserve protect the nature with a new global biodiversity framework the post 2020 global Biodiversity framework in its first such framework on the biodiversity adopted since HI biodiversity target at COP twenty COP ten in Nagoya Japan in two thousand ten. Currently, seventeen and ten percent of the world terrestrial and marine areas respective under the protections. Now, whatever we have discussed, these are the summary. You can even take the screenshot of this. The cunning Montreal Pact has held a landmark protect. to ensure and protect the biodiversity and there are few points by 3030 the cornerstone of the agreement is so that the 3030 goal will be protected indigenous right ki baat ki gayi and even finances part i have already discussed that how a corpus will be developed that will be aligned with the global environment facility right and even china is like basically the chairing of this particular meeting that took place recently Now, moving to the other news, that is the minimum tax on big businesses, something relevant for general studies paper three under the subtopic that is Indian economy and issues related to planning, mobilization, resource growth and development. Recently, the members of European Union they have agreed in a principal implementations of the minimum tax of fifteen percent on the big companies. So, ये unanimously 
डिसीजन थी यूरोपियन यूनियन कंट्रीज की जहाँ पे 15 परसेंट तक एग्रीकल जो बिजनेस है बिग बिजनेसेस हैं उनमें 15 परसेंट जो मिनिमम टैक्स है वो इम्प्लीमेंट की जाएगी राइट देर आर द रैशनल बिहाइंड इट विल सी दैट ऑन द लेटर पार्ट ऑफ द वीडियो नो लास्ट ईयर वन कंट्रीज हैज एग्रीड टू अ प्लान वेयर redistribution tax right across the jurisdiction will be there to enforce a minimum tax rate of 15% on the large multinational companies now it is estimated that the minimum tax rate would boost the global revenues by 150 billion dollar annually now what is eu proposal actually jo eu ke members hai they have agreed ki ek minimum tax rate honi chahiye 15% ki for the big mncs this is in accordance with the pillar 2 of the global agreement that is framed by oecd we'll see the pillars their pillar 1 and pillar 2 now under the oecd plan the government will be equipped with the impose additional tax to the case companies they are found and even playing taxes they are considered too low right so where basically the tax evasion need to be stopped and they need to ensure the big businesses with the big operations do not benefited by the domesticizing themselves in tax haven and in order to the uh, basically tax savings ke liye global operations mein kis tarah se wo apni domesticizing dikha kar ke us jagah se benefit lete hain but for their operating in other country they also make out profit now for particular company which is operating in a different domicile or out of the domicile they will have to pay the higher rate of interest now what is pillar 1 of the oecd tax plan pillar 1 ke mutabik the tax plan tries to address the question of taxing right large multinational companies have a traditional paid in their home and even countries did not most of their business in foreign companies to kai aisi companies agar example ki baat kare like us tech companies and even for many other companies that is operating like google facebook they are operating in india but jo tax evasion se ya jo tax rate hai wo utni zyada india pe nahi charge ki jati the oecd plan try to give more taxing right to the government of the countries where the large business conduct and substantial amount for their businesses now as a result large us tech company will have to pay more taxes to the government of the developing countries because they are operating in that company or that country as well now there are two basic pillar first is already discussed talking about the second one the global minimum corporate tax at 15% to avoid the lower tax jurisdiction and stability for the international tax system this is what the oecd plan is and oecd is rationalizing through its pillar plan if you are writing in mains paper suppose if this question arises in general studies paper 3 you can even highlight the pillar 1 and pillar 2 of the oecd tax plan Now the rationale behind the global minimum tax, the corporate tax across the world has been dropping over the last few decades, and the result of competition being the government to spur the economic growth with the great private investment. The global corporate tax has fallen from forty percent in nineteen eighty to twenty five percent in twenty twenty. So you can see there is a drastic decrease in the percentage and overall proportion. The reason being the tax rate is being high. the oecd tax plan tried to put out the race to the bottom which is which made it mud harder for the government to shore up revenues requirement to fund their spending budgets the minimum tax proposal is particularly relevant at the time when fiscal state government across the world has deteriorated and seen as worsening with the public debt matrix now what lies ahead with this particular uh, rules and regulation by the oecd and minimum tax some government particularly lose the traditional tax haven and are likely to disagree with the stall implementation of the oecd tax plan high tax jurisdictions like eu are more likely to full adopt in a minimum tax plan and saves having to compete against the lower jurisdiction the low tax on the other hand are likely to resist oecd plan unless they are comprehensive sufficiently in the way and it should be noted that even with the eu countries such as poland have agreed to stall adoptions of the minimum tax proposal citing various non economic reason right so these are the things that has to be taken care in a longer run if the policy is being implemented now impact of oecd tax plan on the global economy to support us hai oecd tax plan ke they believe that it will end with a global race to bottom and help the government to collect the revenues that is required for social spending maybe that the plan will also counter the rising global inequality and that will be tougher for the business to pay lower tax by availing the survey tax or the tax havens 
Now, the other news that is governing India in 2047, something relevant for general studies paper 2 under the subtopic that is government policies and intervention for the development of various sectors and issues arising from a design and implementation. For several months, the group of 30 young IAS officers were the part of the team that were engaged in a special mission by the government of India. And it says that there will be a roadmap for India by 2047, right? So several brainstorming sessions has took place that include 10 non-IS officers, 40 academic, 80 entrepreneurs, and all around the age between 40 and less for an idea that how the governance of India can take place. This will this vision call for the governance vision for India by 2047. The focus is, is there on the four thrust, that is the office automations, use of data analytics in the office automations, how the artificial intelligence can be incorporated in the offering, office functioning of the government of India officials and the machine learning technology. For instances, file keeping moving from one level to another in present, the system, which is considered to be a very much loopholes, right? And this is why the things delayed, the process of decision taking are delayed because of the file work shifting from one office to other office and one hierarchy to other hierarchy. This will be reduced down and the efficiency in the government will definitely drastically increase. Priority sectors, governance is one of the important priority among the nine sectors that has been identified by this particular group, which is headed by the secretary level offices. The sectoral group include the group on finance, commerce, industries, internal security and social sector. Of this, two group are there on the finance, commerce and industries and have also presented the vision of the Council of Ministers as well. Now the focus of Vision India 2047, the focus of Vision India is young civil servant who will rise to policy making by position by 2047 and set up their interaction with academia, the startup and research institutions to provide a cutting edge exposure technology in the office automations that is artificial intelligence, machine learning and blockchain. The draft is currently under the considerations of the group of secretaries on governance which is headed by Information and Broadcasting Secretary. Now talking about the roadmap, the idea is to, the idea that is there by the government will have to be approved by the Council of Ministers, which is headed by the Prime Minister. And this Vision of India 2047 document will call for the governance sector that will be prepared by the Department of Administrative Reform and Public Grievances. Now, Deeprang will de identify 30 IS officers, which is 10 more non-IS officers as a part of the group and 40 young officers and young faculty from IIT I that will aid with more entrepreneurs brain coming to this advised with the vision of governance for 2047. Now the roadmap for future, the vision document comprises of the governance part, finance, commerce and industries, internal security and social sector. Moving to the editorial of the day, that is criminalizing the consensual relationship, something important for general studies paper 2, that is welfare schemes for the vulnerable section of the population by the center and the state government. So what is under this editorial? First talking about the theme, the editorial focuses upon the POSCO cases in India and how are the challenges that is emerging in the recent trend, what are the Supreme Court stake and what is the road ahead for the POSCO cases that is operating, right? So misuse of POSCO cases, data and status of the POSCO cases, United Nations Committee on Right of Child and the way forward. India is home to largest adolescence population in the world. India has the highest youth diversity and the most potential youth at the age group, which is uh, definitely going to contribute in the nation building. But adolescence population ki baat kare, among the world, India has the highest population. The National Family Health Survey indicate that a significant proportions of Indian teenage are sexually active. Now, recently, while addressing the National Stakeholder Consultation on the POXO Act, the Chief Justice of India has urged the legislature to take into consideration with the growing concern around the age of the consent under the POXO 8. And Supreme Court, uh, basically CGI, ke agar baat kare, they have categorically mentioned that the government need to recognize the fact that the cases are arising, some are of, with the malafide intention and some are with done with considering the fact that the, the paucity of the rules and regulation is also imbibing the other people to get into this act. 
and then necessary requirement is that the government should come up with a legislation which call for the changed environment and the parameters in the current context now misuse of the poxo cases according to the analysis of the enfold proactive health trust the cases of consensual relationship constitute 24.3% of the total cases that is registered and disposed of under the poxo act that stand for protection of child from the sexual offences between the act that is from 2016 and 20 there, there was a special court that was there in assam maharashtra and west bengal the poxo objective is to protect the children below 18 from any kind of sexual abuse and even the criminal prosecutions for the deprivations of the liberty of the young people from the consensual relationship now the law also uses the parents of the adolescent girl to curtail the expressions and safeguard the family honors but is tarah ki agar blanket discrimination hogi consensual sexual act ke upar then it will definitely withdraw the adolescents and violate their right to life right to privacy and right to dignity as well status and data on the poxo cases according to the crime in india 2021 92.6% of the cases under the poxo act is pending for disposable consensual cases among this is overburdening to the criminal justice system the futility of using the criminal law to regulate the adolescent sexuality cases in terms of evidence and abnormally high in the acquittal rates that is 93.8% in the poxo cases and the fact is that the girl did not Uh, say anything intimating against the accused in 81.5% of the cases so at the end in the court of the law the cases does not stand and unnecessarily it is also the wastage of the timing of the court further in 46.5 cases the victim were married to the accused and the acquittal rate in this was 98.1% as many as court did not wish to disturb the marital life of a couple now there's a standard which is set by the united nations commitment on the right to child the united nations committees on right to child in the general commitment 20 has said that the implementations of the right of the child during the adolescence urges to balance the protection of the children from consensual exploitations abuse with respect to evolving autonomy it recommend that the state avoid criminalization adolescence with similar age of factuality consensual and even exploit new sexual activities it has urged that the states to remove the status of offense which criminalizes the adolescents who engage in consensual sexual act with any other people as well now the way forward comprehensive education sex education is very much essentially required to bridge the knowledge gap and even provide positive skills and attitude to enable the adolescents that makes them a de- informed decision maker and even navigate with the interpersonal relationship Now the efforts need to be there in directive implementing the knowledge part skilling and attitude for the vulnerable groups such as children disabled with out of the schools the amendment need to be considered that the poxo act and indian penal code which decriminalizes the consensual act of adolescents above 16 while also ensure jo log 16 ke niche hain below 18 hain how their part will be protected and how their rights will be protected. a provision recognizing the consent by above 16 may also be considered in india the adult age is 18 plus right now the supreme court has said there might be a consideration for the age so is is india at the right platform where the 16 can be considered for the age of maturity and the age of consent this is something that is again a debatable topic so if you are being asked in mains examination uh, to analyze the topic so you can accordingly no quote some of the standard norms that is being operated and indians rules and regulation that is still in operation now moving to the mcq questions of the day before i proceed just to tell you the answers of yesterday questions for first question the correct option was a for second the correct option was a again today's mcq for practice malabar exercise it's an annual trilateral naval exercise between the navies of india japan and us the exercise is held tentatively in indian and pacific ocean The second question of the day the gender inequality index is released by world economic forum world undp save the children or transparency international so practicing a lot more question will definitely give you an edge for the upcoming prelims examination and this was all about for the daily news and editorial analysis followed by the mcq questions so this was all about 
For today's session, if you have any other concern, you can let me know. I'll be more than happy to assist you. For time being, I'm signing off. Thank you so much for watching this video.